Good afternoon and welcome to the Futures Lecture Series. Whether you're here in the room today, whether you're watching online, or whether you're watching this over podcast, it's going to be podcasted also, so you will be able to see the whole thing again if you're in this room online later on. My name is Nils Bubent, and I will be the host tonight, also the travel guide, because I will take you or well, not me personally, but our guest, our guest tonight will take you on a, an adventure through a world that is not as it used to be. Um, the Futures Lecture Series is co-created and co-hosted by uh, the School of Culture and Society at Aarhus University and by the Open University, Folkeuniversität here in Denmark and in Aarhus. Um, so, what, what kinds, kinds of, world, of worlds, worlds do we inhabit and what kinds, kinds of possible, possible futures are on the horizon for all of us? It is this, these two, two big, big perhaps impossibly, impossibly big questions, questions that, that the future, future lectures try to address. address. Um, um, I know I they are, are possibly, possibly too big for anyone, anyone to answer, answer, but I think, I think we live in a time, time where these, these kinds, kinds of big, big even impossible, impossible questions are needed more than ever um, in order not only to ensure our own survival, but also the survival of all those worlds that are out there, whether they are human worlds or non-human worlds, that we're only now discovering through uh, novel insights, both from the human sciences, the social sciences, and the natural sciences. And it is this kind of collaboration between and across sciences that the Futures Lectures tries to to you. I would, I would like, like to welcome, welcome you all to this, this the third of the lectures, lectures in which we try to pose these impossible questions, questions to our guests, um, who, who are all, all uh, both, both great, great academics, academics, scholars, but also, but also public intellectuals, intellectuals who manage to combine uh, good, good research and good research, research dissemination, dissemination in, in one package. package. Um, I, I think, think this, this goes, goes for no one more than for our guest tonight, Thomas Hulanegsen, and it's a great honor to be able to welcome him onto the stage in a little while. Uh, before I do so, I will introduce him briefly, uh, as well as introduce the program today. It'll take another six or seven minutes, so bear with me. Thomas Hulanegsen is Professor of Anthropology at Oslo University and a prize-winning author of, uh, I tried to count your books, there are more than a Dozen, lots, yeah. lots, lots definitely, definitely, and, and published, published in lots, lots of editions and in lots of languages, languages and, and covering an amazing range, range of themes from um, globalization, globalization, cultural, cultural recognition, recognition uh, anthropological theory, uh, migration, uh, the tyranny of time, and many more. Uh, in many ways, Thomas does not need introduction. For those of you who are students of anthropology, you will know him better than I do, because his textbooks are used widely, not only in the rest of the world, but also here. So Thomas has somewhat of a reputation of being a saint. We call him Saint Thomas out in anthropology. Um, but if you're not from anthropology, there are a couple of things I think I would like to tell you about Thomas. Um, First of all, he has worked for many years empirically out of places like Trinidad, Mauritius, but also Norway and other places on, again, a range of, of themes, globalization, politics of identity, uh, nationalism, and other things. Um, and this insight, empirical insight from uh, these very different places in the world, he combines, I think, with something that is truly his, namely his ability or his engagement uh, with the public. Thomas is a uh, public intellectual in that uh, classical sense of the term. I know his abstract quotes Livy Strauss, and in a way he's the closest I can think of, of anyone from anthropology at least, who's a public intellectual who is not afraid to engage uh, all of the difficult uh, questions that we're facing today in the world. Um, he has engaged in, in Norway, for instance, I know. I've been to a, a dinner with Thomas where he talked about whaling, 
and took up a not very popular perspective, namely that it was okay. <laughs> uh, a lot of people around that table, they were Americans, did not like that at all. Uh, but he, I know he's handled also things like stress. It'll come up in today's talk as well, the tyranny of time, migration, uh, and, and lately also um, 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 global warming. So, I think Thomas is, is good for this type of lecture because he is a scholar who believes in engaged and engaging science. Um, and I think his talk tonight will reflect this duality. He's very much one who is a, a very engaging speaker, but he also wants what he says to engage you, us, all of us, because the topics that he talks two are all things that should matter to all of us. So he's one of these, I think, rare intellectuals who want science to matter out in the world. So I think, I hope you will strap in uh, for a tour, for an adventure through uh, a whirlwind world, if you like. Um, let me say two words about the program tonight. Uh, when I've done talking, Thomas will come on stage and talk for 35, 40 minutes until his argument is complete. Uh, after that, I will come back onto the stage and introduce the panel, and then the three of us will engage in a little dialogue, a discussion about uh, some of the themes that Thomas brought out. And after a while, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes, we'll open up for general questions. There will be two wandering microphones that will uh, pass between you and just put up your hand if you want to ask a question. I want you to please ask questions because Topics like these are um, um, too big for anyone, any one person. You know, the, the kind of world we live in and the future that we are facing is a kind of um, a topic that none of us individually can answer. So please add your voice to the debate later on. We will finish around uh, eight o'clock. Uh, sorry, seven o'clock. After which there will be drinks. Uh, and the, possibly the chance to talk either to each other or to Thomas, if you want to. What you're going to listen to in a little while will be an adventure through speed and its dangers, the dangers of speed, the attraction and the dangers of speed, perhaps. The title of tonight's talk is Overheating, Coming to Terms with Accelerated Change, and it directly, I think, addresses the big impossibly big questions that I talked about before. What kind of world do we inhabit and what kind of possible futures are on our common horizon? For we are, according to Thomas Hüllen Eriksen, a world addicted to speed. We talk faster, we work harder, TV wants to sell us more, we buy more, we eat more, we waste more, we divorce more, Perhaps we love less, I don't know, but we want more, we want more of everything, more love, more experiences, more stuff. We live in a world with attention deficit disorder, one might say, a production system on speed, an imagination addicted to change. Maybe even worse, we become addicted to accelerated change. It is not just change we want, we want change to happen faster and faster and faster. No one, I think, is better placed or suited to diagnose these ills and to point towards some of the cures than Thomas Hüllen Eriksen, a man who works harder, sleeps less, publishes more, and thinks faster than anyone else I know. A man of his times, perhaps, but also a man who studies these times. The talk to that tonight grows out of a large research project funded by the European Research Council and headed by Thomas Hüllen Eriksen himself. Uh, that wants to address this issue of overheating. And as we shall hear, Thomas suggests that we're facing three different, but also interconnected types of crises. A growing environmental crisis, a continually repeated financial crisis, and a multiplying crisis of identity. These three kinds of crises of world risks, if you like, um, are produced by the same intersecting characteristic of globalization, namely acceleration. Naming the problem is the first step to curing it, I think. And I look forward myself to hearing more about the disease and its cures. I invite all of you to sit back and allow yourselves to be treated by Dr. Thomas Hüllen-Eriksen.
please. Oh.